about today is called direct and inverse variation. Direct and inverse variation. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at examples of both direct variation and inverse variation. We're going to take some notes on this side of the paper. And then the other side of the paper, you're going to get some practice deciding which is which. So we're going to look at an example of direct variation. And then we're going to look at that example in a table. And then as well as in a graph and in an equation. So this first example says, I think on your paper instead of this, it says MCHS, right? Ticket to the basketball game. Let's say they cost $2. How, if you go by yourself, how much are you going to owe? $2, right? Really simple. What if there's two of you? How much is it going to cost? And if there's three of you, four of you, and five of you, good. So as the number of tickets is increasing, what's happening to the cost? It's also increasing, right? As tickets increase, price increases. If tickets decrease, if I buy less tickets, the price decreases, right? So that's direct variation. As X increases, Y increases, or, that's really weird, or, as x decreases, y decreases. That's direct variation. And let's go ahead and look at this on a graph. So I have the number of tickets and I have the cost, right? That's my number of tickets is going to be my x coordinate and the cost is going to be my y coordinate. So every single one of these pairs is related to a point on the graph. So this point one ticket costs two dollars. That's just the point one, two, x and y. So I can plot that point, right? I just go over to the one, up to the two, and there's my first point. Then my next one is two, four, and then three, six, four, eight, and then five, ten. And what kind of shape does that make? A line, right? And it's pretty clear, to, it's pretty easy to tell. If I kept going, I kept buying more and more and more tickets, this line would just kind of continue at the same exact pace, right? And is this line, is it increasing or is it decreasing? It's increasing, right? As x increases, y is increasing, okay? What happens if I buy zero tickets? Hmm? It's zero, right? You'd owe zero dollars if you bought zero tickets, right? So that's the other part of direct variation is that it always goes through zero, zero. So graphs will form a straight line, just like we have, and it goes through the origin, goes through zero, zero. Now, on the other side of the paper, you're going to need to decide whether these different tables are inverse, direct, or neither. Direct variation, inverse variation, or neither. We are going, I want to show you how you do that, how you tell by just looking at the table. So what you are going to want to do to check if something is direct variation is you're going to want to divide. Okay, direct, divide. And what we're dividing is we're going to take y and divide it by x. You could also write it like this, y divided by x. So if I take my y, and I divide it by my x, 2 divided by 1, what does that give me? 2. What about 4? If I take 4 and I divide it by 2, what do I get? What if I take 6 and I divide by 3? 8 divided by 4. 10 divided by 5. All right? It's always going to be 2. Okay? So if it's direct variation, 
then I'll be able to divide y by x, and I'll always end up with the same number. And we call that number k. Whatever y divided by x equals, that's k. So what is k in this example? 2. Yeah. So dividing like that is, first of all, going to tell me, it's going to confirm that this is direct variation. But it also helps me to write the equation for this problem. So for direct variation, my equation will always look like this k times x, or y equals kx. I'm just smushing together, right? So this is my equation, y equals kx, and I know that k equals 2. So for this specific example, what is my equation? Hmm? Yeah y equals 2 times x, or just y equals 2x. I'm always going to leave x and y as x and y when I'm writing an equation, because I have infinitely many options for x and infinitely many options for y. So I need to leave those as variables because they will vary. They're changing. Okay. And it's all these points on the line that represent all the different possibilities that could work in this equation. Um, let me just relate this to something you probably already know. What is um, slope-intercept form? Mm -hmm. And what does M tell us? Slope. What does B tell us? Good. And... So looking at our equation right here, y equals 2x, what's my slope? 2, and that's just like 2 over 1, right? So when I'm talking about slope, I'm talking about rise over run, right? If I look at my graph, I'm say rising 2, going over 1, going up 2, over 1, up 2, over 1, up 2, over 1, right? That's very clearly my slope. Is that k? What's my, what's my y-intercept? Good, it's zero. That's like an invisible zero there. And again, I can see that that is true on my graph. It crosses the y-axis at zero. Okay. Good. That's a little extra information. You don't really need that right now. Our main point is that when we want to check if something is direct variation, we divide y divided by x. Every single time, you should get the same number. I can also tell because if I look at my x's, they're all increasing. My y's are all increasing. As x increases, y increases. That's direct variation. So now let's look at inverse variation. Inverse variation. So this example, we have I have 12 cupcakes to share with my friends. Um, and I need to split the number of cupcakes that I have evenly amongst my friends because I'm diplomatic and I need to do that. So if it's just me, if I have no friends, how many cupcakes do I get to have? All 12 of them, right? I think it's funny that I don't have friends. What if I find a friend and now there's two of us? How many cupcakes do we each get? Um, what if there's three of us? What if there's four of us? What if there's five of us? Huh? 2.4. 2.4, just 12 divided by 5. Good. What if there's six of us? What if there's seven of us? Good, 1.71. What if there's eight of us? Oh, yeah. 1.5. I mean, one and a half would be easy enough to figure out. I don't know who's going to sit there and try and figure out 1.7 of a cupcake or 1.71 of a cupcake, but just doing this for the sake of understanding. What if there's nine of us? How many cupcakes does everybody get? Huh? 
I, someone lost my pass, so you can just sign out. Oh, I'm not waiting for the pass to come back, too. <laughs> no. 1.3 repeating, right? What's 1.3? What's the 0.3 repeating as a fraction? One third. 0.3 repeating of a cupcake is kind of hard to, like, conceptualize. I don't really know what that means. But one third of a cupcake, that makes sense. Huh? You can do that. You can do that, but we're talking about cupcakes. If I told you cut me 1.3 repeating piece of a cupcake, you would look at me like I was insane. You could do that. Well, but we have cupcakes. I saw Herschel's did to me the other day. Anyway, I've got one and one third cupcakes per person. What if there's 10 people? 1.2. What if there's 11 people? What if there's 12 people? One cupcake each, right? So I can tell, it's pretty clear, as I increase the number of people, what's happening to the amount of cupcakes each person gets? It gets smaller and smaller, right? So that's inverse relationships. As x increases, y decreases. Or just the opposite, as x decreases, y will increase. And what would happen, like, what would happen if I kept adding people? What would happen to the number of cupcakes? It's going to get less and less and less, but what is it, what is it getting closer to? What is it tending toward? Towards zero, right? Mathematically, like theoretically, it would never get to zero. But obviously, if I only have 12 cupcakes and I split it up between 1,000 people, it's going to feel like you get nothing, right? But theoretically, it never actually touches zero. It just gets closer and closer and closer. So let's look at that on a graph. So again, each of these points is a point on my graph. And number of people is going to represent my x coordinate and number of cupcakes is my y. We also call our x coordinate or x variable the independent variable. And the y variable is our dependent variable. The number of cupcakes everyone gets depends on how many people are splitting. So each of these points is, is a point on my graph. So 1, 12 is my first point. So I go over to 1, up to the 12, but I don't have 12 on here, so I can just imagine it's like right there, 1, 12. 2, 6. 2, 6. I go over to the 2, up to the 6. 3, 4. I go over to the 3, up to the 4. 4, 3. Over to 4, up to 3. 5, 2.4, so I take, I go over to the 5, and then I go up 2, 2 and a half, 2 and a half ish, 2.4, just below 2 and a half. 6, 2, over to the 6, up to the 2. 7, 1.7, over to the 7, up to just below the 2. 8, one and a half, so halfway between one and two. Nine, one and a third. Ten, one point two. Right? And now I can pretty easily tell what my line looks like. What's the shape? Yeah, it's a curve. Yeah, I thought of like a bike ramp or a ramp of some kind of kind of like that shape, right? And what's going to happen is that line is going to keep getting closer and closer and closer to zero, but it's never, ever going to touch. Never actually touches zero. Okay. So now I see my graph, and this graph is curved. It's nonlinear. My other graph was linear. It's a straight line. This one is nonlinear. It's curved. And as well, the other part of that graph 
other piece to notice is that it does not pass through zero, zero. Does not go through zero, zero. Okay. So if you see a graph that goes through zero, zero, it cannot be inverse. We really all right, and then let's talk about how we identify inverse relationships from the table. So for direct relationships, we divide, right? I take y and divide by x. Every single time I take y and divide by x, I should always end up with the same number. For inverse relationships, we need to multiply. And we are going to multiply x times y. X times Y. So what's 1 times 12? Give me. Isabel, before you go, what's 1 times 12? Um, 12. Can I use the relation up here? Sure. 2 times 6 gives us what? 3 times 4 gives us? 4 times 3? 5 times 2.4? Right? It's always going to be 12. So it's always going to be the same thing. And that's how we find K in inverse relationships. X times Y gives us K. So K in this case is what? 12. And again, that information helps us to write our equation, our inverse variation equation. Looks like this. Y equals K over X. Y equals K over X. Me too. So in this case, what is my equation going to be if k equals 12? Good. y equals 12 over x. So that's what my equation will look like. Okay, where are we at? We got 18 minutes of class. Okay, so we're going to move on to the other side of the paper, and I want you to get some practice. So your first task is filling out this side. This side, this part is what I'm grading today. This side. So you're going to need to look at these tables and decide, is this direct variation? inverse variation or neither. You can just write D, I, or N. So again, direct, inver direct variation, you should divide Y by X and get the same number every time. If it doesn't do that, it's not direct variation. Inverse variation, we need to multiply x times y, and we should get the same number every single time. Neither is just neither of those things work. Yeah. Hi, you're going to. And then. After those, we're looking at our equations. So which equation shows inverse variation? Remember, our inverse variation equation looks like this, k over x. This side says which equation shows direct variation? Our equation looks like this, y equals k times x. So you'll need to pick one answer for each of those. Which one shows inverse? Which one shows direct? And then finally, we're looking at our graph. And again, saying, is it direct? Is it inverse? Or is it neither? And again, you can just put D, I, or N. 